if we are talking about artificial intelligence, games are very popular. It's like one of probably the most popular applications or classical applications of artificial intelligence. And usually we are calling games which are based on discrete steps or turns. So we have one player and this player can perform one of some set of actions. And after this move is made, this player will give turn or give the opportunity to the other player to decide what actions they would like to take. And then we have again, if we have only two players, they change turns and so on and so on. So we have this well-known picture you have probably seen many times when we have each player moving their pieces, for example, in turn. And you have just learned about those blind strategies and best first strategies and depth first and breath first. So you immediately would feel how to use artificial intelligence strategies to traverse and visit all the nodes in the tree. And of course, some of those nodes, some of those nodes will result in the game ending. And you now see that some player won, for example, and you see how much, how much they won, whether it was a draw or there was some domination of one player over the other. And of course, these three may have variable depth. So maybe some game will finish very soon, but maybe some other branches in the tree could go very deep and maybe even could be infinite. You probably know that, for example, in chess and in many other games, you have some safeguards against continuing the game forever. For example, you are detecting cyclic behaviors and you are not allowing cyclic behaviors, but still in many games you could probably try, especially if those players would agree and would intentionally want to play forever, this could probably be possible. Okay, and of course, if we have a human player playing against the machine, we would like to have some non-trivial algorithm of a machine to be a demanding opponent of a human. So how do we do this? First of all, if we have a very fast machine or a lot of memory, or maybe the game is very simple, you could probably imagine having and analyzing the entire tree of the entire game. Right? For example, when you have this three by three circles and crosses, probably this is such a small game that you could even draw the entire complete tree on this table. If you have the same game, but five by five, maybe it grows. I mean, the, the, the search space of this tree grows and it's no longer that obvious. And of course, if you have, if you have checkers or if you, if you have chess or bridge or go or some other more complicated game, this tree or, or maybe even those like first person shooter games or some strategic, strategic games, those trees become huge and then you are not able to analyze them in their entirety. So you need to limit the analysis of the tree and usually the limit is time. Given that you have a computer with some performance and some speed, the limit is time. Also consider and realize that this is like time. So when we are analyzing this tree, we are, we are looking into the future. We are at some point in, in time, in the game. This is our past. So this already happened. And now we are trying to imagine and predict what could happen in the future. So 
So the only certain information and the information that everybody would agree upon in most games is this information when the game is finished. Because then we know who won, right? Otherwise, when the game is still in the middle, it's not so obvious to tell what's the score. Of course, in some games you have scores in the game, but in many games it's quite subjective and one player can think that their situation is good and some other player can think to the contrary that their situation is quite good. So there may be no objective truth. But still, it's very useful to have some measure of the state of the game. And this state or this, this evaluation is often called a heuristic evaluation. You know why heuristic? Because as I mentioned, it's not objective and it's not certain and it usually needs to be evaluated very quickly. So by definition, this is approximate. Nobody is assuming that this is the objective truth. And it will help us a lot. It will help us, help us or by us I mean this computer algorithm, it will help this computer algorithm to take actions depending on which moves are the most promising. But again, remember, this is time and this is future. So this is what we are imagining could happen. And this computer algorithm will be analyzing the future, trying to be prepared for what could happen and what moves the opponent could make. Let's assume first that we have a very fast computer or a very simple game and we were able to imagine or generate the entire three. So from some point, maybe we were quite close to the ending of the game, so there were not so many possibilities. We were, we, we were able to generate all the branches, all the possible moves to the end all, or all the ends of, or all the completions of the game. So, we are very lucky because each branch ends with some leaf and this leaf has this objective information who won. So this is a very fortunate and comfortable situation for the algorithm it imagined all the possible endings of the game and all the possible paths in the tree and all the possible moves and all the possible combinations of the moves and what the algorithm should do. The very sensible assumption to make is that when we are at some level when we are making a decision, what, what move should we make at this point? If this is our turn, of course, if we have some evaluation of those moves, we will be always picking the best move for us. So this is like a <laughs> very obvious thing to, thing to say. If we want to maximize our score, and we have some heuristic evaluations, 7.4, minus 1, minus 7, 2.4. Of course, we will pick the highest one, give, given or assuming that the higher the value, the better for us. So this is, this is quite an obvious assumption. But if we are at the level of our opponent, then we will be assuming that the opponent will take the action or will make the move which is the best for them and we assume that, for simplicity actually, that it is equivalent to being the worst for us. So what is the best for the opponent is the worst for us and we assume that the opponent 
if they only can, will choose the action which is the worst for us. It's like, like being very pessimistic. Of course, it may not happen, and the opponent may take, may make some or perform some other action, which will not be as bad for us. But then we will only be happy. So we are we are assuming the worst scenario. This is again quite a common assumption that we are imag imagining that the opponent will choose the worst action for us every time the opponent has any choice. They will make something unpleasant for us, as unpleasant as they, as they can. Another assumption when we perform such an analysis is that we are evaluating all those nodes. Nodes are states, like, like uh, you can imagine we have some board, like on, on a chess, we have chess board. When, when we are evaluating the state of the board, we have some common point of view or some common scale. So it's not like we are using one heuristic function for us and another heuristic function for the opponent. We are using the same heuristic function, so we have the same scale. And again, for simplicity, let's assume that we are trying to maximize this evaluation, and this evaluation is made from our point of view, and the opponent is trying to minimize the score. But the evaluation is still made from our point of view. Because if we wanted to evaluate the situation from the opponent's point of view, then they would want to maximize their score. But we, for simplicity, let's assume that we are evaluating always the state from our point of view. So if it, if it is our turn, we are maximizing the evaluation. If it is their turn, they are trying to minimize this heuristic evaluated value or quality of the state. Okay? Th these are all our initial assumptions. Now, if we were so lucky to analyze the entire tree and we have all the endings, we have a very simple situation. Every time the opponent has any choice, assuming this pessimistic strategy, every time the opponent makes a move, we assume they made the worst move for us. So we will choose the lowest, or we will propagate propagate up the lowest value of all the moves that were possible for the opponent. Okay? So if, for example, we are here and this was opponent's move, and the opponent could make this move and this move and this move and this move and this move, and it was minus 1, 4, 7, minus 2, and 10, we assume, since this is the evaluation from our point of view, we assume that the opponent will choose this move, minus 2, because this is the worst for us. Okay? So if this is true, we will propagate up this information, and we will assume that if we ever ended in this state in the game, since the opponent will choose the worst move, then this state in the game for us is as good as minus 2 because it will lead to the opponent making this terrible minus two move, okay? So every time there is the opponent's move, we assume they will make the worst action. And this is why we propagate this worst information upwards. But if it is our move, we will, of course, choose the best action for us. It was, I guess, 7.5, so we propagate the best information, the highest value, and this node will be worth 7.5 for us, because if we ever reach this node in the game, we know that we will choose the best action, and the best action will be worth, or will lead to another state which is worth 7.5. And this is why we have this name of the algorithm, which is called min-max. And max refers to those levers when we make our move, 
we are maximizing, and mean refers to the levels where the opponent makes their moves, and they choose the lowest, the lowest value. So if we have reached all the endings of the game, and we have this objective information who won at the leaves of this tree, we should simply propagate this information upwards, 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 through, through these levels, min, max, min, max, min, max, min, max, until we reach our current point in the game. So, so the present, probably this is, this is the present moment. And in this moment, we will see what moves do we have to make, what choice do we have, and we will see specific values here. And those values will be those values which were propagated from all the endings in the game. And we will obviously choose the best move for us. Okay? So this is what I explained to you. This is the, the complete strategy of how to use min-max if we have we are, we are fortunate enough to be able to explore the entire tree. And in the, this uh, scenario, in this situation, we don't even need those, this heuristic function, this heuristic evaluation function, because we based our decision on this objective, true information about who won all the ended games. Okay? Do you understand everything? So this was easy. E, and, and this is also um, not a practical and not often encountered situation, because usually we don't have so much speed to reach, because you know we have this exponential explosion of the number of possible moves on every level. So usually we are not able to analyze the entire tree. But as I said, if the tree is somewhere towards the end, and there are not so many moves left, then sure, we will be able to explore probably all the endings. So if we are unable to do this, we unfortunately have to finish our analysis, because, for example, the player is waiting for the computer to make some move, and like 15 seconds passed, and the player wants the computer to do this move, or maybe one minute or five minutes passed. Anyway, the computer is forced to make some move. So the computer will be only able to explore some amount or some number of levels in the future. And then the time will be up. And the computer will have to refer to this heuristic evaluation of nodes. So these are those unfinished games, unfinished games in the future. So nothing actually changes in this min-max procedure. What changes is that if we were unable to roll out those three to, to the end, we have to base our decisions on heuristic evaluations of unfinished games and unfinished game states. So we could say that this is less credible, but still, it will work. It all depends on how good our heuristic evaluation function, or sometimes called static evaluation, this heuristic evaluation function is. Of course, the more trustworthy this evaluation function is, the better, but usually trustworthy evaluation functions need more time or require more time to be computed. So. There is a trade-off between having a quick and uncertain and unperfect, imperfect evaluation function and spending a lot of time analyzing this state and having trustworthy um, evaluation that takes a lot of time. And if it takes a lot of time, it means that we will not be able to unroll this future more. So we will need to finish our analysis earlier in the future. So that's why I'm saying that this is a trade-off, because sometimes we want to have simpler function, less accurate, but we will be able to analyze more future. So I think this was all simple. And this min-max is quite trivial. 
what is usually not trivial is a modification of this algorithm which will save us some time save us some time in the analysis of this tree and this modification is called alpha beta alpha beta but before we talk about this i would like you to think about one of the algorithms optimization algorithms we talked about a long time ago and this algorithm was called branch and bound branch and bound so how branch and bound work just to remind you we also had a tree and at the root of the tree okay we were talking about we are now talking about optimization so we had a huge set of solutions and we were trying to find the best solution we had a tree and at the root of the tree we assume that we don't know anything about our solution and then we were building our tree adding pieces of information we were adding pieces of information on each level until at the leaves of this tree we had complete solutions so this is the level when we had complete solutions this is the level when everything was incomplete and on subsequent levels we had more and more information we were filling more and more pieces in our solution but each of those incomplete solutions actually it was not possible to evaluate them because they were not correct they were they were not feasible at all some like if we are for for example considering traveling salesperson problem these were inco incomplete routes but we still were able to tell that all all the solutions that ca came out of this of this partial solution will be worse than something so for example the length of all the roots were higher than some value now do you remember this branch and bound idea this was the branch and bound algorithm and i'm reminding this because alpha beta is very much like branch and bound but it's like a double branch and bound and, or branch and bound in two ways or branch and bound performed simultaneously in two directions in two contradicting or opposite directions okay let's see first how min max will work and then we will see how alpha beta will work min max is so trivial that it will be very obvious this is our initial state in the game we have four moves to choose from this is our opponent and let's assume we were lucky and we know for certain or maybe not for certain but we anyway we trust those values i'm just putting i'm just putting random values here so this is our decision level we want the best for us so we want the highest value but after we make this move we, we don't yet know which move out of those four we will make but we know that from each of those moves the opponent will also be able to perform some moves so this is the level of our opponent and the opponent will want to make the best for them the be we, we want to choose the best move for them which will, we assume will be the worst for us so in full min max as i mentioned this is trivial here the opponent will choose minus one if the opponent will choose 
1 because this is the lowest number. Here we have 0 and 7, so it will be 0. 4, 13, and 1, it will be 1. Okay. So for us, we have minus 1, 1, 0, 1. Those two are best. Depending on our search strategy, we will choose either the first best, or the last best, or the random best, or maybe we will return this information, this complete information about those two moves and use some other policy to choose the best. Anyway, the conclusion is that our quality of our current state is one, and we will do either this move or this move. Okay? So this is min max. Now, what is alpha beta? Alpha beta is a way to save some exploration in this tree by pruning or ignoring some branches. And by definition, the result of alpha beta will always be identical to min max. So we are not losing any information, we are not losing any quality. We will always get the same result, but we will just save some computation, some unnecessary computation. And looking at this tree, would you, would you be able to tell if it was unnecessary to look at some node? Maybe this is misleading because I already gave you those values. But you could imagine that you don't know those values. And the question would be whether the result would be the same even if we didn't see some values here. And what's more, the result would be the same no matter, no matter what values would be hidden. Or no matter what values would be discovered under those hidden those hidden nodes. Let's consider some examples. We have four choices. Here is our opponent. And the opponent has some, some number of choices. So this is our maximizing level. This is minimizing level of our opponent. By the way, this is just an assumption. You could as well switch it. You could assume that you are minimizing and the opponent is maximizing. It doesn't matter at all. It's just by convention that we are assuming that you are, as a human, are maximizing and the computer is min or the opponent is minimizing. But of course, it's, as I said, it's just a convention. OK. So. You want to know which move to make, this, 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 or this. First of all, you, you know completely nothing. So you have to call the evaluation function, and you, you want to avoid calling the evaluation function, and you want to avoid unrolling the tree, because this is what takes time. So actually, so far you didn't spend any time at all, and if possible, you would want to save as much computation and as much time as possible. But you, don't, you know nothing, so, so you have to know something. OK, so you are asking, what's the evaluation of this node? Let's say it's 5. OK. If you know that this is 5, you already know something. You know that your opponent will make a move. You don't, you don't know which move, this or this or this. But you still know that this state, from your point of view, has which quality? It's, you could rewrite it as it's a minimum of 5, and you, know, you don't know yet what, and you don't know yet what. So it's a minimum of five and something and something you didn't yet discover. And instead of writing minimum of five and whatever and whatever, 
you could as well write it as less than or equal 5. True? It's true. Okay. You reveal some information. So from your point of view, this indicates that this state is worth 5 or less. You don't know precisely how much. And now you should, you should realize this analogy to branch and bound. When you also were promising that this part of the solution will be worse than something. Like all the roots, cyclic roots, will be longer than as many miles or as many kilometers, right? No. These can be from minus infinity to infinity. You have no idea what number will be here. But no matter what number will be here and here, you will always get five or less. Because this is the magic of this minimum function. So if those values will be less than five, then this value here will be lower. But if those values will be higher than five, then five will win because of this mean. You could at the same time ask whether you are able to say something about this node and this decision. But since we don't know yet anything here, we cannot say much on this higher level at this point. So let's explore further. Let's assume that we evaluated this node. Again, we didn't want to do this because it takes time. But we evaluated this node or this state in the game. We got four. So now here we have minimum from five, four, and something. Do we need to update this formula? Pause the video and try to answer this question. Yes, it will be less than or equal to 4. And we evaluate further. Let's say it's 5 again. Do we need to change anything in this formula? Pause the video and try to answer this question. We do. Now it is 4 for certain. Okay. Now it's four for certain. And now we can say, we don't know which out of those four move we want to make, but for certain we know that our, the quality of our move will be at least four, okay? Because we will choose the best move, so it will be max. You can always imagine this, it will be max of four and something and something and something. Okay? So this is why I'm writing four or more. Let's continue our analysis. Unfortunately, we don't know anything about those options, so we need to explore a at least a little bit any of them or all of them. So we are evaluating, even though we don't want to do this, we spend our time evaluating this state, possibly by unrolling or by calling evaluation function. Let's say it's two. And here is some unknown unknown. Let's say it's two. So we put here, what do we put here? What do we put here on this minimum level of our opponent? Pause the video and try to answer this question. Minimum of two and something else, which would be two or less, right? Two or less. Mm -hmm. And the question is, should we explore more as we did before? Pause the video and try to answer this question. We, don't, we have no idea what values could be here. It could be from minus infinity to infinity. We don't know anything. But do we really <clears throat> need to explore? 
Pause the video and try to answer this question. Look, look, look at this, look at this place. And this will be marked of four, of something less than two, and of unknown and of unknown. Do we need to learn more about this less than two? Pause the video and try to answer this question. Why not? Pause the video and try to answer this question. Because it's less than two. We know that it will, no matter what values, if we discover here 15 and 20, <clears throat> these are great options for us, much better than four. But our opponent will not allow us to go there, because the opponent will always choose two or less. Okay? So even if it were plus infinity or any value higher than two, it will not happen because of our ugly opponent. So we do not need to we do not need to know what's here and realize that we may have many, 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 many possible moves and many branches. We are completely pruning and ignoring all of them. So this is our gain in in calculations and gain in computational time. We leave, we leave this information as less than or equal to, we do not visit and do not evaluate those nodes. And do we need to update this information up? No. This node is, is still worth four or more because it's our level and we will be choosing the best for us so definitely not not less than two okay let's continue we are evaluating this and this is five it is five so what do we put here pause the video and try to answer this question at least five i don't know if it's at least because it's less or equal so it's not five or more. And do we need to spend our time revealing this value? Pause the video and try to answer this question. Yeah. And if yes, then why yes? There is still some potential in, in, in this branch. There is still some potential because it, this branch may bring us more than four. So we trust that maybe we may be lucky. Okay, let's say that we are discovering this and it is six. What do we do? How do we update this state of the game? Pause the video and try to answer this question. It's our ugly opponent. He will choose five, and now we are certain that it will be five. Unfortunately, we will not, if, as I mentioned, if they don't choose five, but they choose six, we are only happy. But we are cautiously pessimistic, so we are assuming the worst, just to be prepared for the worst. We may, we may always be surprised if our opponent will not be as good as we assumed, and they will give us a present in some better state. Okay, so five. Do we need to update this? Pause the video and try to answer this question. Because it's now maximum of four, less than two, five, and we don't know yet what. So what do we put here? Exactly five or at least five? Five or more. Okay, so now I think you are starting to understand how it works. One. What do we put here? Pause the video and try to answer this question. Less than or equal one. Do we need to explore more? Uh, I mean, do we need to learn the evaluation of those states of the game? 
Pause the video and try to answer this question. Why not? Pause the video and try to answer this question. Yes, we will never... It is like a filter. It will not pass any value higher than one. So it will be always less than one. So obviously it will, it will be not be not more than five. You could even imagine it like on a scale. This is one and less than one. Right? And we already have five or more. So it's like the intervals which which have no no and no common area. So we can exclude it. Okay. So this is an example. Okay, let's have four branches again, or maybe even five. But this time, to avoid getting used to this max mean, we will make it mean and max. So, like, considering the same thing for, from a different perspective. So, we are not overly used to this specific situation. By the way, we are still getting used to, to the situation when we only have two levels. And in reality, this algorithm will work across many levels. But for simplicity, let's stay, let's stay with two levels. First of all, we, we need to reveal something, at least to have any specific information. So we will probably reveal all those three numbers. Mm. Do you want to pick any number? Give us some numbers, some integer numbers. Six? Okay. So we know here that this... Maximum six, maybe just write using this shorter notation. At least six, okay. Any other number? Four. Four. So it will be... Nothing changes, right? Any number? Nine. Nine. Okay. So now, now we are actually certain that it is nine. And now we can propagate it up. Mm -mm, no, because this is the minimizing level. So it will be less than nine. This guy, this guy here in, is interested in the lowest value out of five. Okay? And this one is maximizing. Okay, another value. Seven. Okay. This will be... Yeah. At least seven. And now the question is, do we have to reveal, do we have to reveal this? Pause the video and try to answer this question. Yeah, yeah you could always write that it will be mean something less than nine and, and something more than seven and something else. So we have to, because if it's not, well, more than nine or nine, and remember, by better, from, from the perspective of this guy, is less. So, for example, 8 would be better for this guy. Is there any chance to get 8 through this maximizing level? There is. There still is. So, we, we still have to check. And do, what do we get? <laughs> you, you heard our discussion. So. Okay, it's 8 for sure. We still don't, okay, yes. So give us more numbers. Three. Do we have to explore more? Here we will have three or more. Will this guy be interested in three or more? Why? Less than eight. Still worth the, still worth the inspecting. Still there is some hope. Five. Five. 
Still checking? Still checking? Still checking if this, because this may bring us or fulfill our hope, but maybe not. We still don't know. One. But this guy is maximizing. And this was the last branch. This was the last branch. So we have three, five, one. So this, this will be five. And this will be less than five, because this is now the best move. Great. More numbers. Ten. But you have to put something here. This is max, so at least 10, 10 or more. We don't know here, we don't know here. But what we do, why we don't want to check? So again, we have these disjoint intervals. You will always choose 10 or more, whatever. Yes, exactly. Whatever is here, it will always say 10 or more, because this guy wants the best move for him, the highest value. OK, so we saved this, and we also saved po possibly some other sub-branches. Uh, more numbers? Two. Do we need to analyze those remaining nodes? Pause the video and try to answer this question. There is still a chance to be less than five. Mm -hmm. No, you said six. Let it be six. So it will be higher, six or more, right? Do we need to explore more? No, because this, this filter, OK. So five, five was our certain decision. And this is the best move, right? The best, the most optimistic move. OK, so I will only repeat that the result of alpha, beta is by definition the same as min max. We are only saving or pruning some subtrees, but the result will be the same. So in, in this regard, a min max, this, this um, raw min max or classic min max sounds like a waste of computational resources because we, we, are, we are evaluating nodes which we we probably don't need to evaluate. I will repeat again that this idea works on many levels simultaneously, so it's not like we always have two levels. And also, as you can see, the, the efficiency or the, the amount of saving depends on the order of those nodes. So if we ordered those nodes in a different way, like for example, this, is f this node 5 would be the first node evaluated, we may be able to save more computation, like to, to prune more trees. And this is exactly consistent with our branch and bound observations. If we were able in branch and bound to discover a very good solution very quickly, that then we would prune or ignore more subtrees. So we would save more time. So it's always good to order nodes so that we get to the best results as soon as possible. Of course, it's not easy because it's our mystery. It is a mystery for us. We don't know what is hidden behind those mm, nodes or what's the evaluation of those nodes. That, that's the the whole difficulty of analyzing trees. And as a last word, probably, because uh, this mean max and alpha beta was like classical artificial intelligence algorithms, I will tell you about another idea which is more modern. It, it's called Monte Carlo tree search. What's the difference from mean max? Monte Carlo tree search does something different. It actually visits some selected path in the tree 
until it reaches final nodes. But we know, since we have this exponential explosion in the number of possibilities, right? this is like pure combinatorics, 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 on every level, we cannot unfold all the tree. So that's why Monte Carlo. We will be only visiting a random subset of nodes, probably just performing ran random actions on every level. So we'll not be thinking a lot. We're just performing random actions just to get a random sample of the quality of a node. And what is the quality of a node? It's simply a ratio of one games. A ratio of one games that goes through this node. So this way, we have a stochastic, like an approximation of how good this node is. For example, we win 7% of games. 7% of games if we randomly choose our moves starting from this node. And this is the difference when we compare uh, Monte Carlo Tracer to MinMax or Alpha Beta, because we are not basing this knowledge, this 7%, we are not basing this on a heuristic evaluation of, of the board, right? We don't need heuristic evaluation at all, or this static evaluation of, of the game state. We are just trying random games, and we are gathering statistics or some approximation of how, how likely it is that we win the game if we reach this node by performing random very quick actions. So Monte Carlo Tree Search does exactly this for all the nodes, performing very quickly random and playing random games. And it actually needs to balance something that we talked about a lot when we talked about um, optimization. We talked about exploration and exploitation. Exploitation was digging in places when we discovered something good, and exploration was exploring the unknown. So similarly, Monte Carlo research has to decide whether it should focus on a node where you, th this ratio of winning games is very promising and very high, and maybe it should play more and more and more and more games to become more and more certain as to this high value, or maybe it should discover nodes where this number of randomly played games is low, or maybe even zero, so we never played such games. So this is this exploration-exploitation trade-off, as usual. And when do you use Monte Carlo tree search? Usually when you have a tree which branches a lot with this high, high degree of branching, Monte Carlo tree search may be actually more efficient than classical min, max, and alpha, beta. So in modern playing engines, Monte Carlo tree search is often used, and you can actually mix both approaches. So you could mix Monte Carlo tree search with min max. You can mix Monte Carlo tree search with heuristic evaluation because you don't need to you don't need to play the games until the end if you don't want to. So it's all up to you which technique you use and how you will modify it according to your needs if you want. Okay, any questions to min max, alpha, beta?